Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Margaret Hewitt. She's a parishioner of St. Joseph and a member of Call of Guadalupe Cas. Welcome. It's great to have you back um, you, yeah, to the show. And, and you were sharing about your love for Mary, which uh, do you want to tell us about your childhood and, and how you got to love Mary? Well, there was always a great devotion to Mary uh, uh, around me. And um, we used to have um, a May procession, mm. and that was um, celebrating Mary's life. And, um, and of course, at Christmas, we always celebrated um, Mary and, and the baby Jesus, mm. and, and the, whole, the whole picture of that family with St. Joseph. Mm. And uh, Christmas has always been very special to me. And of course, Mary um, has mm. appeared to people in Ireland. Mm. I think it was during the famine time that um, uh, she appeared to a village in, the, I think it was in the, um, in the uh, well, the part of Ireland, uh, I think it was around Donegal. And um, Yes, uh, they had great faith, um, all the Irish people, but they were so downtrodden and, um, and starving, some of them. Mm. And um, one of the parishioners uh, was down at the church and uh, Mary appeared to him. Wow. And he went and got all the other parishioners. So she appeared to not just one person, she appeared to a whole village of people. Wow. Yes. And um, there's a beautiful cathedral um, built there now. And so if anybody ever goes to Ireland that is listening, please go and see um, the beautiful shrine to Mary. It's called Knock. Oh. Be uh, Knock is a Gaelic for a mountain wow. or hill. Uh -huh. And so it's Mary's hill. And um, there's been great um, miracles there. People mm. go on pilgrimages, like um, they go to Lourdes and, or Fatima. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, yeah, so it's, uh, it's quite famous yeah. in Ireland. Yeah, I was not a believer much in Mary. I was always Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And, um, but when I was away from my faith, um, someone said, say the rosary, and I said, me? No, no, I'm not into that. And one day I was looking at a statue and I felt like Mary was saying, you know, that if I, like, because I was going through depression at the time, if I go for a swim, I would feel better. And actually I did feel better, and she was like a mother. And I realized that um, saying a rosary was a comforting thing for me. Yes, yeah, I think it's a comforting thing for most people. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And with your, um, how does, G Mary tends to lead people to Jesus, doesn't she? Oh, yes. Yes, very much so. Mm. Yes. And, um, yes. Uh, yeah, you've been in that musical Call of Guadalupe, and there's a part where um, she leads people to, to Jesus and she says, come to me, but at the end she says, come to him, which she leads them to Jesus. Oh yes, she does, you know, yes. And um, yeah, sometimes when I'm praying, um, not that I'm a great prayer, but um, when I'm praying, she, um, she always points the way to Jesus. Mm. And actually, um, I have a prayer written by Peter Foster, who wrote the music oh. for Guadalupe. And uh, when he was in care, I was on the phone to him one day, and we were chatting, and he said, oh, he says, I've written this prayer to Mary. I said, oh, have you? So he said, would you like to hear it? I said, I would. And um, anyway, he, 
he read out the prayer, I said, um, I'd love a copy of it, Peter. Mm. And it's a beautiful prayer. I'm sorry I don't remember the words, but I just read it every day. And, um, and it's asking Mary to point us uh, towards Jesus. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. So I kind of pictured that in my mind when I'm reading it, you know, and uh, with Mary at the cross and she's just pointing to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what does a child of Mary mean? Well, a child of Mary, to be honest with you, I didn't know much about it, you know. I just joined things. Mm. And mm -hmm. as I said, I just took things for granted, you know. We had a blue cloak oh. and um, we walked in the procession oh. of Mary and we wore our blue cloaks. Oh. And um, we had a little meeting at, the, at school and mm. um, I'm not sure what prayers we said, you know. It's been mm. too long ago. Yes, and you also have been involved in the Legion of Mary, which is something like the Child of Mary, isn't yes. it? You visit people. Yes, it would and you been help, like that. And you help share the faith. Yeah. Um, and, and you say the rosary before you share your faith. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. And they have that at your parish, at St. Joseph, the Legion of they Mary? They have the Legion of Mary, Fantastic. yes. I've never been involved here, you know, but um, yes. And uh, yes, it's very good for um, especially young people to be involved, you know, yes. Mm. With the, um, the world the way it is now, there's so much um, being put out there, you know, for young people. And uh, it's not always good. Mm. And they can't distinguish whether it's good or not, you know. Yeah. And, um, and Mary can put them right. Yes. And you've even trusted God and Mary in your marriages. I hear that you, uh, um, after your husband passed away, you, um, you met your future husband quite soon after. I did. Well, I, I had known him from the time we, mm. we came to Australia. Mm. Um, when yeah. my husband and I came to Australia, yeah. we uh, came by ship. Uh -huh. Before you tell me more of the story, we'll go for a break and I'd love to hear more of it. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Margaret Hewitt. She's a parishioner of St. Joseph, Chelsea in Melbourne, and she's also a cast member of Colo Gualute Musical. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, you've been uh, um, part of a musical, but before we talk about our theatre, we'd like to find out more about your um, husbands, your two husbands how that came about. Because I know that you traveled to Ireland on a ship with one husband and then you ended up having two husbands later on. So tell us the story of how God provided for you. Well, when we, start, when we decided to come to Australia, um, we had a choice of coming by plane, flying, or to come by ship. So we decided to take the ship because it would mean that we'd have a cruise coming mm. over and, um, and a holiday on the ship. So that sounded great. <laughs> and it, I must say it, it really was. Mm. But on the ship, we met another Irish couple who were coming from Dublin as well as ourselves. And, um, but we, we lived in opposite sides of the city, so I never knew them in Dublin. And they, I had four boys and they had um, four children too, two boys and two girls, much the same ages wow. as my boys. So we became good friends on the ship. And when we arrived in Australia, we still stayed good friends. Great, how long were you on the ship for? We were on the ship for six weeks. Oh. And um, because the Suez Canal at that time was closed, Mm. And so 
we went into um, the Mediterranean and we had to come back out again then. Mm. We went in to pick up more people oh. around the Mediterranean and we came back out and then um, we continued our journey. Wow. And we had a most wonderful time on the ship. Yes. And there was a beautiful um, uh, priest from Australia on the ship. Mm. And uh, he had mass every morning. Fantastic. And that was really lovely. And also he, um, he gave us the, uh, the address of the, um, the local church Wow. because we were going to stay with a friend of mine who had already gone to Australia and we were going to stay with her and um, she hadn't been going to church she she was Irish but she had given up going to church and so he gave us the address of the local church and the name of the priest that was there and so wow. we went to see him when we came to Australia. Looks like God had his hand on your life was yes. looking after your faith. Yes. And um, but um, yes, yeah, so uh, some years later, um, after many holidays for the two families together, my friend Josie died of cancer. Oh. And um, and because I was a, a singer and um, part of the uh, music ministry at St. Joseph's, I was able to sing the parts of the Mass at Josie's funeral. Mm. And that was very special. Mm. And, um, but a couple of years later, my husband died. Oh no, two tragedies. Yes. And um, he wasn't very well at the time of um, Josie, when Josie died. And, um, Yes, so, uh, and that was pretty sad. And how old were you then? Um, I was, he was 55 when he died, oh, so young. I would have been 53. All oh, right, pretty young. Yes. And um, so a few years later, like Patty and I, uh, the other husband, came, uh, we kept up our friendship, and eventually he asked me to marry him. Wow. So, um, so I did. Wow. And did you have like joint, did you bring all the children together on both oh, sides? Oh, yeah. Well, we were always together, you see, <laughs> you know, so, so all the kids grew, kind of grew up together. Oh, you wow. Know. So it's one big yes. happy family. Yes. So, um, and I was married at St. Joseph's. Wow. Yes. And uh, I was married to Paddy for about nine years, uh -huh. nine and a half years. Uh -huh. And then he got cancer oh. and he died. Yeah, and, and you've, yeah. You've, you've always stayed positive. How did you get through the grief? Is it through your faith? Um, well, I don't know really. You know, I've always kind of, um, I have the kind of um, way of thinking that things are always going to be all right. Mm, that's a great attitude. You know, yes. And um, so, no matter what's going on, you know, I'm going to be all right. Yes, because it seems like God's hands has been looking after you. Yeah. And I like that scripture, for those who love God, everything works out to good. Yeah. And you've always loved God. Yes. So he's always yes. worked even your suffering to a good, to a good situation. And yeah. you, you're, you're already reaching out to many people while, whilst grieving, having, you know, not having two husbands. Yes. Mm. And as I said, I, I've always liked people coming to my place and, and sharing a meal with me. And I feel that that has always been a great positive in my life. Mm. And um, yes. Yeah, and so I've met many new people like that wow. because when people come to St. Joseph's, uh -huh. I may not know them, but somehow if I'm drawn to them, Mm. And um, we start chatting, and I'd say, "Would you like to come and share a meal with me?" Oh, fantastic! You know, and I've got to know quite a lot of people like Is that. Is it like the first Sunday of the month, or third Sunday? Do you have a special day that you tend to stick with? Yeah, it's always a Sunday, is it? Yes, you're right. And is it always the first Sunday of the month, or third Sunday, or it doesn't matter yeah. which Sunday? That's fantastic. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And do so, people bring a, a dish or do you provide everything? I usually provide, you wow. know, it, it's the way Irish people have always done things. Wow. So um, 
I didn't understand about bringing plates. We, yeah, we <laughs> share a plate, bring a plate. <laughs> but often people ask, and I say, would you like to bring something? Uh -huh. You know, if they'd like to bring something, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, fantastic. Now we're going for a break. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Margaret Hewitt. She's a parishioner of St. Joseph and also a member of Colo Guadalupe Theatre Group. Welcome back, Margaret. Thank you, Geraldine. Um, I would call you a merry widow. Even though two of your husbands have died, you always seem to be joyful. So how is it? How do you deal with grief and troubles? Well, it's something you have to kind of live through mm. and come out the other side. Mm. Um, there is a passage in the Bible that says, uh, in the New Testament, that we shouldn't grieve like people who have no hope. Mm. And um, somehow I always have hope. Mm. But I remember at one stage um, when my um, husband Tom died and uh, I seemed to be really fine for a few days and then all of a sudden I had a day when things were not good. Mm. And uh, at that stage I lived in a house by the beach, overlooking the beach. And um, so I just took the phones off the hook, closed the door, and I sat by myself that day, just looking out at the water. Mm. And then the next day, I woke up in the morning and uh, I said, well, now you've had your day in, Margaret. Time to get back out. <laughs> And yes, so, you yeah. know, and uh, sometimes a song or something, piece of music can remind you about different things. Mm. And, uh, and that brings back things to me at times. Mm. And look, if we weren't sad about um, people um, going, it would be strange, wouldn't it? Yes. You know, yes. I don't like goodbyes. I like hellos. Yes, <laughs> aloha. <laughs> yes, and you know, it's never kind of the right time to say goodbye, mm. no matter what age you are. True. You know, yes. But you know, with the Lord's help, you get through everything. Yes, and I think you have a great connection of communities, don't you? Oh, yes. How many communities do you belong to? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now I've got a new one in Guadalupe, haven't I? I know, the musical. <laughs> and they say, once you cog in, you can't cog out. Well, that's it. <laughs> and Christine always says, stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. Yes. Don't jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's been a joy to have you in Call of Guadalupe Theatre Group. And what were the challenges of being involved in a theatre group? Well, the challenges were, I think, my age, really. Mm. You know, because... Um, Yes, when you asked me to be the grandma, you know, um, reading the lines of paper was no problem. I could act them and no problem. I didn't mind being on a stage um, because I've often been on a stage to sing even by myself. That never wow. was too bad. And um, but it's just remembering lines at mm. my age. Having said that, I never was good at it. Um, remembering a lot of things, yes. you know. But a miracle happened, you remembered your lines. <laughs> but with the help of a lot of um, people in the, um, in the cast and that encouraging me and um, saying, you'll be fine. And, and, and yes, I was, you know. Yeah. And it's I got people to pray for me that I would remember the lines, you know, yes. Mm. 
And I think the cast were quite accommodating. They always had a seat for you, isn't it, to make oh, sure you had rested? Oh, that's right. You know, they encouraged me to sit down at times, and I wondered what they were doing that for. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking, I'm young, why do I need a seat? <laughs> When people put their hands out to help me down steps, I wonder what that's for. <laughs> because, um, thank goodness, um, the Lord's helped me to stay fit. And um, But I do go to the gym twice a week. Oh, that's amazing. Yes. At 84, you go to the gym <laughs> twice a week. Yes. I should be doing that. <laughs> Please, you're inspiring me. I'm back to the gym now, starting well, tomorrow. My stepson um, has a gym. Oh, and wow. when I was around 70, um, I did hurt my back a bit, Not, just a strain, a bad strain, you know. And um, he had been asking me to come to the gym, you know, but I, I wasn't a gym person, you know. Mm. Anyway, um, so he said, look, Margaret, as soon as you're finished with the um, physio, he says, you come to the gym. So I've been going ever since. And now I know I can't do without it. It it's keeps true. me fit. No. Yes. yes, I have a friend who's lived beyond most of her friends because she goes to the gym twice a week like you, you yeah. know, so um, yeah. good on you. And uh, I, I want to do that as soon as I can. Yes. Yeah, I might even join your gym. Well, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what, uh, you know, what sort of um, activities do you do in the theatre group that help help you as a person? What kind of things that do you find really beneficial for you being in the musical? Well, being in the musical was um, really beautiful, um, especially looking at the young um, people. I mean, um, Vance announced that um, the age group in, in the musical was between eight and my age, 84. And um, all of the children were so beautiful mm. and so enthusiastic. Mm. And they knew their lines and the songs and the actions before anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I'm sure their parents loved them when they saw them on the stage, mm. you know, because, and, and, you know, the children were so good, you mm. know, uh, yes. Yes. I think yeah, one of my most beautiful moments is seeing the children, um, you know, joking with the people like in their 80s, you know, with um, Terry and you and, and looking after you and, yes. and yes. you know, and just and just loving you all, like hugging you yeah. all and yeah. just being great friends. Yes. No, it was lovely, you know. And when I see the children at the at the church, you know, or around the school, Yet they always come and say hello. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. It's been great to have you, and I wish you all the best, and um, goodbye, and God bless you. Oh, thank you. You're most welcome. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Join us again next week. Goodbye, and God bless you. Free.